My name is Nader Ingeta. I'm the H. Nedville Ramsey Professor at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And my home department is Department of Electrical and Systems Engineering. And uh, I have affiliation with three other departments, uh, Material Science and Engineering, Bioengineering, and uh, Physics and Astronomy. And uh, my area of research interest and activity is uh, Physics and Engineering of Fields and Waves. Uh, I'm very passionate about waves and the technological applications they can offer. One of the uh, areas of research activities in my group is uh, uh, wave interaction with metamaterials. So you may wonder what is metamaterial? Um, ordinary materials are made of atoms and molecules. For example, if you consider a cube of gold, for example, it consists of gold atoms and with a specific pattern uh, that these atoms have. And in fact, it is the atom and the specific pattern that gives electromagnetic properties to the gold atom. In metamaterial, uh, we go beyond this natural uh, arrangement to a new level of organizations uh, in which we design uh, tiny structures uh, made of uh, different materials. And the electromagnetic properties and optical properties of these metamaterials uh, depend on how uh, we shape uh, and arrange and choose the material for these tiny structures. Uh, the interesting uh, point about metamaterial is you can design these tiny uh, structures in order to achieve properties that are beyond the ordinary, uh, very unusual property and effects on waves as the wave interacts with these structures. One of the interesting you know, uh, uh, applications of metamaterial is in the area that we call optical metatronics. Now, what is an optical metatronic? It's a, it's a new circuit paradigm in which uh, uh, tiny nanostructures, uh, when properly selected with the proper material, size, and shape, can function as optical lump circuit elements. I've been inspired by the uh, uh, field of electronics. As you know, field of electronics has played a fascinating role in the 20th century and continue to evolve in the 21st century. And one of the reasons that electronics have been so successful there are many reasons, but one of the reasons is the fact that in electronics we have modularized system. We have lumped elements uh, that we teach our students, like you know, resistor, capacitor, inductor. The same way that in electronics you can put different elements next to each other, kind of like an alphabet of a language, here you can actually put also these nanoparticles next to each other to have optical circuitries with different functionality that you would like to have. One of the directions that we are currently working on is that is it possible to have this uh, optical metatronic nanocircuitry put together in order to do information processing at the nanoscale? Could we actually have you know, mathematical operation done by light using these uh, nanostructures? For the field of uh, uh, metamaterial, there are various applications that we are currently uh, working on. Uh, one of the areas uh, that also we are, we are working extensively in the field of metamaterial is how to actually design such materials in order to have extreme uh, uh, features in light matter interactions. What do I mean by extreme? Uh, these could be extreme in material parameters, for example. If you consider, for example, a, a, a medium uh, with a certain uh, effective permittivity or certain effective permeability, uh, we are designing materials that would have this effective permittivity near zero or effective permeability near zero or both of them have effective parameters near zero. And when you have structure with this type of extreme uh, uh, effective parameters, they have quite fascinating uh, uh, interaction on the waves, both from the wave physics point of view as well as in the uh, quantum optical aspect. Apart from metamaterial, I have uh, another interest uh, in my group, uh, and that is on uh, 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 optical polarization uh, imaging and sensing inspired by the biological uh, visual system, eyes of certain animal species in nature. Uh, this is the area that uh, I was introduced to by a colleague of mine, Professor Ed Pugh, at that time at the University of Pennsylvania. And he introduced me to the field of polarization vision in nature. As you know, uh, uh, there are uh, 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 animal species in nature that can actually see polarization of light, like uh, many classes of invertebrates, bees, ants, and so on. So we got inspiration from uh, what these species, the eyes of these species, can, can utilize the polarization of light. 
And uh, uh, we brought that concept into the optical imaging by developing imaging methodology and imaging system uh, that can equip uh, this, uh, uh, this instrument with information that we receive from the polarization of light. And with that, you can actually see the world around you with this additional capability of the polarization of light. One of the, uh, the uh, capabilities that these species have, for example, in the case of bees, they can actually use the polarization that's coming from the sky, and using that, they can navigate uh, to, their, uh, to their nest. And uh, some other uh, animal species, particularly marine species, they can use this polarization information for better target detections. So what we did, we developed camera system that uh, we could actually see farther away uh, in the uh, optically scattering media, such as, you know, uh, uh, water that would be scattering. And you can see farther away. 